So it's the sixth month of the year, right before summer, and that means examinations for a lot of you guys. Want to know five tips that got me through my examination period? And keep watching. Let me tell you a story. So I'm in my second bachelor year back in 2008 and it's examination period. And a couple of friends call me and say, hey, let's celebrate this guy's birthday. There's a party somewhere, wanna come along. These guys were, yeah, not having examinations. And then I started thinking, hmm, it's examination period, but I'll go anyway. So I take the matter to the people that raised me. By the way, grandma, grandpa, thank you so much for your upbringing. And the only thing these people asked was, you got this? And I was like, I got this. And I went to the party. Okay, so there are several factors here at hand that you might not have in control, like the strictness of your parents, of course. But if you want to know why I decided to go to that party, even though I had examinations the week after, then stay tuned and keep watching. Okay, on a first note, a university system usually has max one to two examinations per week, I think, because the courses are bigger, there's a lot more material to study. At least it was the case in my university, so I don't know. First check out how your university organizes the examinations before you do anything further like me saying that you can't afford to party. I could. Perhaps you can also if all the factors align. The main thing is actually related to a video that I've made earlier, which was my number one advice. So here it comes again, because this can help you with examinations. So that's tip number one. If you pay attention in class, if you get the material in class, you don't have to do efforts in examination period. So getting the stuff in class requires you to actually go to class. Now, did I skip a few classes now and then in my time? Yeah, I did, like IT on Monday morning in the first year, boy. Ooh. But apart from that, I consistently went to all classes. If you get it right there, then you have less effort to restudy and even get the concepts than to memorize it. That's half the job already. Oh, okay, uh, a quick in-between here. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that bell button as well, because there's a lot more content coming on this channel for any life science student. Biomed, biotech, biochem, pharmacy, molecular biology, bioengineer, biomedical engineer, you're all in the right place at Biomed Master. Or should I say master? UK sound or US sound? Je peux parler en français aussi, c'est pas problème, mais c'est déjà longtemps passé voor mijn Nederlandstalige vrienden op dit kanaal. Ik kan het ook in het Nederlands. Ik spreek geen Duits. And perhaps for my Korean friends, Chokuman Hangugo Hal Suisoyo. Hola, buenos dia, ni hao, konnichiwa. For my friends from the Arab world, salam alaikum? Question mark. So I wish to say hello to you guys in a lot more languages, but if you're watching from anywhere in the world, thanks for watching. The second tip is related to that is repeating up front. I'm not saying you should study intensively like you would in an examination period. No, I'm saying just take a few papers now and then read the chapter again and then you start memorizing the concept. So if you work more in the year, your examination period will be less stressful. Simple as that. Okay, so those are two tips that actually require you to work up front before examination period. Now, three more tips that I have that got me through examination period in the period itself, and they're all related to your body and having a lot of energy to study because let's face it, the mind and the body is connected. So tip number three, stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. I'm not, I don't mean gallons or, or cubic meters or anything. I mean, if you feel dehydrated, you will have less energy. Oftentimes, if you feel tired, you might be getting sick. You might be actually tired of doing a lot of work. But perhaps first take a big glass of water and see how you feel after. Because hydration, dehydration, being dehydrated can actually diminish your energy levels and make you feel tired. Love this guy. 
Tip number four is movement. Movement. You're studying all day, you're sitting at a desk all day, you're sitting on a chair, there's no blood flow after too long of sitting time. That sounded too much like with a cowboy accent, right? What I'm not saying is that you should go all intensive, that you're dead beat and can't study anymore. Just take a simple walk perhaps. There's a thing called brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, and that's the reason why probably Bill Gates goes for a walk when he has brainstorms to do. Get my point? Mind-body connection. If you walk, you activate your brain. Simple as that, if you move. So keep moving in examination period. And that's the one thing that I did massively during my examinations. I also watched a lot of reruns of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, now that I recall. But that's the thing. Like I said, my examination period was structured in a way that there was one exam per week, max two, because there are big exams on university level. There's a lot of stuff to put in your head. But then coming back to the tips before, if you stuff things in your head beforehand, then you have less work in examination period. And then there's tip number five is getting enough sleep. Now I'm saying this to you guys because I kind of sinned against this one myself for some examinations. I think this does sound familiar. Perhaps your alarm is going off at 4 a.m. in the morning and you're still revising some stuff right before examinations. Yeah, I've been there too. But is this the most optimal setting? Perhaps maybe for one or two exams, but you cannot do this the whole examination period. Your energy levels will decrease by the end of the period and perhaps you have a big one, a big examination at the end. Then what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when we come for you? Bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna... Will Smith again. So I'm not saying go to bed early and rise early. Because for some people that doesn't work with their biology given their circadian rhythms. Some people are more active in the morning. Some people are more active late at night. I'm just saying get enough sleep. Because if you lack sleep your energy levels will decrease. You can't concentrate and your studying won't be that effective. So if you study late, no problem. Just make sure you get enough sleep for your body. And then if you rise late, and then yeah, you can start again, no problem. Morning people, evening people. Doesn't matter, just get enough sleep. So there you have it guys. I'm gonna repeat these five tips again that I have for you to get through examination period. It helped me. So number one, be in class during the semester. That helps you in examination period. Number two, do regular revisions during the year. Don't do big ones just now and then take a chapter and then read it again and then you start memorizing. Again, in examination period, you'll sift right through. Number three, so we're now at the physical tips. Number three, stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Number four, keep moving. And number five, and one last thing, one last tip that I would give to you is if you're going into examination period and you have a certain course coming up, make sure you can gauge how well you know the course. And that is why I went to that party in the second year because it was a course of three study points. I knew I had it in me. I knew I knew the material beforehand so that I could afford to go to that party. So make sure you can estimate for yourself how well you know the topic, how well you know the course, and if you control the material and you are ready for that exam. So with that being said, I wish you a very, very productive, successful examination period, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.